Hi everyone and welcome. I'm down here in my basement. This part of my basement I refer to as my wormery because this is where I keep my worms. And the worms that I've got on my checklist today to get fed with these delicious food scraps that you see here are the, not this one, but the one down below it. The one that's um, a 32 day old bin at this point. This would be feeding number five overall at various intervals. Um, it was a week since they last got fed. And since these are both African night crawlers, I checked in on this bin too, even though they didn't get fed last week. We were checking in just to see how things were coming along because we had decided a couple feedings ago that it would be the last feeding. It was its 15th feeding and um, it was decided that it would be time to just let the worms focus on whatever little scraps might remain in there and break it all down, try to get a nice batch of finished compost before we um, start thinking about getting them into some new um, location. So basically feed the new bin, check in how things are coming along um, in the old bin, and uh, that's pretty much it for today. So let's get started. So the first bin that we're checking on is the old one. This is 150 day old African Nightcrawler worm bin. I haven't been fed in a couple feedings now. Seven days since the last feeding of the other bin where these guys didn't get anything. And I don't even remember, maybe nine days prior to that. So it was um, 15, 16 days since this bin was last fed. I don't recall what kind of foods they got that, um, oh no, okay, it's coming back to me. Last time we were in here, last week, to look around and see how things are coming along, we did find some of the leftovers of the last feeding. And they were some cantaloupe rinds. But it wasn't even the whole rind anymore. It was just um, fragments of that uh, outer, rougher portion that's a little bit tougher and made out of material that might take the worms a little bit longer to consume. But other than that, there were pretty much no leftovers. So these little guys have been doing quite a job in here. Last time I was in here, or maybe not even last time, but a time prior, I had taken out a, a plum pit just like this. <laughs> And I just put it in with the food that was going to go to the other African Nightcrawler bin. So I just did the same here. We'll, we'll just move that pit over to over to the other bin when we get around to feeding that one. But now here, um, as opposed to feeding, I'm trying to think of what can I do to make sure that the worms um, don't neglect any material that needs their attention. You know, what can I do to ensure that everything in here gets broken down nice and thoroughly so you might have noticed right in the beginning I scraped off all this material off the top I what I did last time we were in here was I had just created a hole where I knew I had last fed just to see what kind of the action you know was looking like in there and then while that hole was there I had just dumped in a bunch of this stuff that seems like it might be a little bit dry might require a little bit of work for the worms to, to work it all down so I thought I would do the same again today. I would just um, start submerging some of that rough stuff that you find on the surface, which is a little bit dry. And, you know, it doesn't have to just go in and there's a big mound in the middle like I did last time. Maybe I'll just take handfuls at a time and start blending it in throughout the bin. And then, you know, the next time I check in here, it's probably some of the material that's out here on this surface that'll start coming up as dry and needing attention. But there's obviously still a good amount of stuff that these worms can focus on in terms of getting uh, nourishment, all kinds of chunks of bedding. That's all fair game as far as food. So now down here is the middle portion. We might bump into little bits. This might be a piece of corn cob, I believe. You can already see some of these chunks of the cantaloupe brine. Interesting how they've got this cool pattern, which certainly lasts much longer than the rest of the material on the melon. It's so cool how it just um, has that interesting pattern to it. I kind of didn't expect to find them. I thought I would have these all composted down by now, but I, I guess they take a little bit longer than I had expected. So here in the middle, some of the expected leftovers in a way. I knew there could be bits of this remaining. I just didn't think there'd be so much, which is fine. We'll get to it all. That, that probably just indicates to us that there's, you know, an abundance of stuff for them throughout this bin, so they're not even focusing on these things here. So 
I, I did bump into a few more chunks of stuff that feels like corn cob bits. They're, they're chunks that just don't seem to break apart in my hands. So let's grab maybe half of this stuff here. Get that this stuff all submerged down below the surface as well. And then we'll find a home for this remaining bit of collected junk that we set aside. The moisture, I'm not sure if it comes through on the video, but it is pretty nice. Everything seems kind of damp, but nothing seems too soaking wet to prevent it from crumbling. The only things that don't crumble are things that I believe are just leftover chunks of food. Everything else just seems to flow pretty readily. There's little chunks, but if you were to just press them a little bit, they would break apart. One, two, three. But you also see little sticks and stems, all these leaf stems. They're all very brittle and they're coming along great, so they'll be gone soon. So, well, we've pretty much gone through all parts of this bin and I don't think I saw any hot spots, if you will. I didn't see any spots where I was observing excess worm activity. To me, it just seemed like there's an even spread of worms throughout this material. And I think that's because there's no um, concentration of food in any one spot. And we're kind of doing the same to keep that consistent as, um, you know, not piling all the remains and leftovers into just a single spot. I'm sort of distributing throughout the bin. And I guess we're going to let it keep going. It's looking pretty nice in here. 150 days and I believe 15 or 16 days. Um, what I refer to as foraging going on in here. And I think the worms are doing a great job. So we'll let them get back to work and we'll get on to feeding the, the newer batch. So these are the northeast worms, um, African night crawlers. And I guess he's kind of getting a reputation of selling big, huge worms, and that's what I got. But I also got a combination of not only big worms, um, but also a whole bunch of cocoons and baby worms as well. So this is supposedly um, kind of a large population in process of coming together. So there's a couple worms that are hanging out here on the surface enjoying the moisture. There was a coffee filter and a couple pieces of paper towel out here. Sort of resting on the top surface is um, almost like a platform for the collected moisture coming off that plastic to drop onto and give the worms a reason to nib nibble away on that paper or hang out on it, whatever they like, maybe hang out under it. And some of it is like this piece here, <laughs> it's totally shot, not much left of it. The last time I came in here, we dug a hole down the middle and we dropped the other half of this egg carton down into the um, feeding area. And then we gave them their feeding, typical feeding of stuff out of my freezer and then some grit, and th these guys will get grit again with this feeding here. So let's check out how the feeding area is coming along. This is a um, piece of cardboard, was originally a tube, cardboard tube. I, uh, I think we're gonna find you know good amounts of the original bedding that this bin was built with, since it's only been occupied with worms for about a month now. And the food that they got I guess only about a week ago is still here in bits and pieces I think it feels like a little chunk of something I can't tell what it is because it's very small whatever remains of it and down here oh yeah here it is you can see part of it already part of the egg carton that the food was dropped into I'm always curious to see if the worms are hanging out inside the tube there's always tons of castings in there So they've kind of done a number on this end of it, it seems. I don't see any part of it. So we could say that about half of it has survived <laughs> after a week of onslaught in the worm bin. And since it's cardboard, you would think that it's kind of on the, um, it's kind of on the favorites list for these worms. These worms do have a tendency to really like their carbon-based food items. Oh, guess what? We just found the rest of it.
it's kind of like um, piecing the Titanic together <laughs> a lot of pieces um, kind of cool to see worms hanging out all over the place right here inside one of the pockets it looks like there's just a whole uh, you know why because there's a good amount of leftover food remaining there that's why they're all trying to work off that little bit of leftovers oh, here too another cell within the egg carton with some leftovers in it and the um the worms working hard to break it all down so the um so the food that i got here we've got the hmm, all right i broke open the the bag but the the cauliflower rice or whatever you want to call it is still kind of a single chunk still frozen together the banana peels thawing out nicely um i'm wondering what to do maybe we'll just return this as the foundation to rest our new stuff on top of sort of trying to reassemble it with what remains but rather than piling the fresh food right on top i think we're going to grab some of my um packed up cardboard bits because we know how these worms love cardboard I guess I can give them a couple handfuls of this stuff Let me spread it out a little bit so I've got other paper products here to to give them I've got a whole, whole bunch of shredded newspaper too so I'll bring over a handful of this as well that's a lot <laughs> Um, but I need to tell myself that I shouldn't react that way to um, instances where I provide lots and lots of bedding because I think it's been said by others before um, and it's so true <laughs> they can never have too much bedding so even though it seems like I'm adding a lot especially relative to the fact that the bin is chock full of um, leftover bedding materials um, I think we'll be all right we'll just grab some of this older stuff there's all these old paper towels this piece of tube here more paper towels stuff is really tattered it's going to be gone soon <laughs> and that's the whole idea so we'll continue to cover up here i think the food itself um let's just dig another little hole here i, I always worry about putting in this paper all by itself so what I spent a little time doing there was trying to mix in some of this older junk to sort of make its way in between the leaves and sheets of um, shredded paper and maybe it'll help the paper um, not kind of wad up into just a, a chunk a blob I want to keep it all you know easily accessible and stuff that worms can pass through and nibble on all parts of it I don't have like chunks of anything so we'll see if I can maybe break this thing up a bit. It would be nice if I could spread it around. Kind of like the banana, which is pretty easy to spread around. You just spread it out. Okay. Now, um, before we sprinkle the coffee on, let's see what we could do about... <sighs> maybe not. <laughs> I have my handy dandy pocket knife here which I can use to break this thing up into little chunks I'm just trying to size it up in terms of how does it look relative to typical feedings I think it's a pretty good typical feeding especially since these worms do pretty much um, make a meal out of their bedding as well so by giving them all that bedding, it's um, probably all going to count as food pretty soon, too. So before I drop in the coffee, I'm going to sprinkle in a little bit of grit. This is crushed eggshell. Helps the worms break their food down. And the coffee. Now, there was a coffee filter right on top next to those pieces of paper towel that we saw almost invisible very hard to see <laughs> so here we have a new replacement coffee filter that we could spread right over on top of where the feeding was applied kind of like a feeding zone indicator but before we do that we're just going to cover up the 
central part of the bin to make it look kind of no different from the rest of the bin even though that's where the food's hidden and so we don't get any weird passerby critters insects or whatever taking an interest in this stuff here so now before we close up shop here I'm always curious to see how the outer edges of my bin or bins are doing I guess it's to kind of excavate some of it and see worms hanging out right there it's a pretty good sign seems a little bit dry but not dangerously dry and I'm trying to remember how it looked last time we were in here I can't recall exactly what the deal was but I don't think that there's any reason for concern the dampness level seems you know pretty much perfect Let's see if we can cover up some of these pieces of paper. <laughs> and uh, let's just take a little peek over here too before we close up shop. Same story here, not much difference. Material looks very similar. Unfortunately, perhaps a little drier even. And even though I see a worm here and there, I don't see many. So, um,. Gosh, they're so big. <laughs> I see one of these things and I'm just like, man, look at his eyes, it is worm. It's a little bit bigger than the worms that I'm used to seeing, so it's a little bit of a treat. All right, well, I made a little bit of a mess here. Let's see if we can level things off here and cover up some of these little pieces of unslightly fresh cut white paper. I'm trying to make the top surface look a little more natural. I suppose another thing I probably could have done was just sprinkle some leaves across the top. But I don't know, I just feel like after only five feedings, if I really want to eventually hit 15 feedings like I did with the other bin, then um, i got to leave a little bit of room <laughs> for future feedings. They'll eat all the bedding too, but I also want to leave room that I can um, get rid of my kitchen scraps. In my so all we have left to do in here is to get things covered up, and we're done. So, oops, i got a little bit of a, some sort of veggies there. I guess it must be cauliflower rice. <laughs> <laughs> stuck to my glove let's leave it here for the worms to eat getting my fingers a little bit dirty but as long as I can keep a clean pinky to manipulate the camera I'm good to go sometimes I wish I did use two hands it would be so much more fun to mess around in this stuff with both hands <laughs> all right everyone that's it for today's video hopefully you enjoyed it if you did as always please remember to leave me a thumbs up that's always really appreciated and if you haven't done so already, please also consider subscribing to the channel too. That's really appreciated as well. All right, everyone. Have a great day. Bye now.